वर्णिवे शरमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्रीगणश्याम महाराज जय ऑल माइट इज सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बिलवड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कठोर लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाथ गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू इज जय स्वामी नारायण सदगुरु ने कुरानंद स्वामी डिस्क्राइब सम अदर इंसिडेंट्स हैपन इन द लाइफ ऑफ सम ड्यूटीज टुडे इन 153 चैप्टर ऑफ भक्त चिंतन ने इन दिस चैप्टर ने कुरानंद स्वामी डिस्क्राइब an incident happened to some devotees so a group of devotees who lived in a town of buranpur in the central india and iskunanan so right in this chapter bahu bhakta buranpur ma bhave kari bhaje bhagavan सहाय करे जेनी श्री हरि पड़ पड़ माही अनंत देयर वर मेनी मेनी ड्यूटीज लिव्ड इन द टाउन ऑफ बुरानपुर दे ऑल वर्शिप भगवान स्वामी नारायण विद द ग्रेट डिवोशन एंड दैट्स व्हाई भगवान स्वामी नारायण मेनी टाइम्स प्रोटेक्टेड दिस ड्यूटीज फ्रॉम ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ डेंजर्स एंड ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ डिफिकल्टीज और प्रॉब्लम्स एंड दैट इज व्हाई अगेन इस कुनानंद स्वामी रार इन द सेम चैप्टर प्रगट प्रभु प्रगट प्रापति प्रगट माने कल्याण प्रगट पर जा पड़े पड़े पूरे छे श्याम सुजान मीनिंग इफ अ ड्यूटी हु बिलीव दैट भगवान इज फॉर एवर प्रेजेंट ही इज फॉर एवर विथ मी एंड बाय अंडरस्टैंडिंग भगवान ऑलवेज विथ वन सेल्फ इफ वन वर्ड सी भगवान स्वामी नारायण विथ फुल डिवोशन with pure heart then bhagwan swami narayan is always even bhagwan swami narayan each and every moment give him or realize that person that bhagwan is forever with me and he always remain ready to protect me from all kinds of dangers and problems and difficulties these groups of devotees who lived in buranpur there at the time actually there was no mandir in the town but all these devotees they gather in one devotee's home every day they do the aartis and kirtans and uh doing bhajan and dhun and everything after that they all Uh, and get themselves in a uh, discourses related to bhagwan in this way even they made a home as a mandir whenever these devotees they gather in one home for worshiping bhagwan swami narayan at the time they never talk for any other matter but only for bhagwan when they come into the uh, into this sabha or the gatherings especially for religious purpose then they only talk about bhagwan swami narayan's divine miracles as well as his divine form and the uh, events happen in the presence of bhagwan and some nan santo and the other devotees whether they uh, whether they experience such kind of events in a gadda or in wartal or in at, at any other place 
because at the time there was no any easy transportation facilities and that's why these devotees even once or two once or twice in a year they have to ch- uh, they have a chance to uh, enjoy such kind of celebration in the presence of bhagwan swami narayan and that's why they when they went or when they took part in such kinds of events or celebrations with the bhagwan swami narayan at the time they capture all these events in their mind and again and again they repeat all these events and all the ceremonies all these celebrations in their mind not only that after repeating in their mind they also talk about this incident with the other devotees and that's why such events and celebrations whenever they desire to recall it they can even actually visualize before their eyes and that's uh, these devotees they teach us that whenever we have a darshan of maharaj or our puja guruji or santo or whenever we be at uh, whenever we are in a mandir for any special events or whenever we are in the presence of puja guruji and santo at that time we should also focus our full mind on that events and in the events the talks or the discourses related by uh, discourses related by uh, related with bhagwan uh, delivered by puja guruji or santo we should memorize it as well as whatever ceremony is performed at that place we should also memorize it and we should recall it again and again in our mind why because what happened see in the in this group of devotees of buranpur when they recall again and again the event in which they have a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan at different different places like gadda or vartal or any other places but after recalling the events they not only re, uh, remember bhagwan swami narayan's divine form but also the forms of santo and devotees also the talks related to bhagwan in this way after recalling in their mind they even talk with each other the same events and after sharing their experience with each other even again they recall and uh, rem- remember in their mind and finally even at even in a sleep when they went to sleep they have they all have a dream and in the dreams they all got a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan so if we want to get a darshan of bhagwan in our dream then we should also recall or remember or memorize or repeat in our mind the events and all the celebrations happen in the presence of maharaj and puja guruji by this activity not only repeat in our mind but also talk the same event our experience with the others and by sharing our ideas our experience with the others we also listen the same words and same experience again and that's why we after some times we actually got a darshan of puja guruji and santo in our dreams so this is the method taught to us by nishkulan and swami in this chapter so now as all these devotees they have a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and uh, santo and devotees in a dream still they have a desire to have a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan as a human form and that's why they decide they decided to go there at gadda for darshan of maharaj there was very very 
long distance between Buranpur and Kajra. And at that time, there was no transportation facilities, meaning no buses, no trains, no cars, no bikes, nothing. They have only very few uh, means to uh, means for the transportation. Either they have to walk for long distance. If they cannot, then they have the another option. If they have a bullock cart or a horse cart. Besides this, there will be no any uh, particular way to go there for long distance. Now, this group of devotees they decided to go there in a, uh, at Kajra for the darshan of Maharaj. So they st started their journey with the bullock carts and some horse carts. At the time, there will uh, there was no any motels and hotels in the way. And that's why they have to take all kinds of stops and all the um, vessels and clothes and everything they have to take all this through uh, throughout their journey. That's why they collected all these stops and they also loaded all these things into many other horse carts and they all sat down in another horse carts and they proceed towards Gurra. Now, after many days, they reached in, in the way. The way was very difficult. Why? Because the road was passed through the jungle. And in the jungle, they have a fear of not uh, an animals, but they have a fear of some decoids and some thieves. Because at the time, thieves mostly lived in such a jungle and whoever passed through the way they first stop them even they kill them and whatever their possession they tap or steal all these stuff and money and ornaments or whatever now this group of duty also encountered by this uh, one group of thieves now thieves they garden this group of duty and they capture all these duties and they even after first beating all these duties they tied both the hands of each duty behind their uh, tied both the hands and they lead them into deep of the jungles now these devotees they have no any weapons nothing else they have only one weapon and that is the remembrance and chanting Bhagavan Swaminarayan's holy name now this was the very tough situation for the devotees but the uh, the senior devotee he w gave a warning to all the other devotees that this is a very tough time for uh, for us now this this will happen only because of Bhagavan Swaminarayan's will but this is happen only because of something lacking in our devotion towards Bhagavan so now be aware be cautious and now start to do bhajan start to remember Bhagavan Swaminarayan and chant his name with pure and full heart so that he will definitely will come to rescue us now all these devotees they started to chant Bhagavan Swaminarayan's uh, holy name while remembering his holy, divine form and after some times without any indication without any messages passed or nothing still Bhagavan Swaminarayan along with many many devotees like Surakhachar Dada Khachar and many other Kathi devotees they have weapons in their hands and Bhagavan Swami along with all this group of devotees on a horseback they came there meaning they appear there because at that time Bhagavan Swami was in a Gadda and that's why in this jungle Bhagavan Swami divinely appear over there with the, all the other devotees they now call in this group of decoits and thieves now 
uh, when Bhagwan Swami along with the devotees appear over there they started to beat all these thieves then the thieves they started to run here and there but the group of devotees with Bhagwan Swaminar and on a horseback they were many and that's why they caught all the, the thieves there and finally all these thieves they pleaded Maharaj please forgive us forgive us because because we have no food at all in our home so how we can feed our family and our own stomach that's why we have to do this dirty job of stealing then Bhagavan Swaminar after uh, as this group of thieves they uh, pleaded many times and they touched the feet of Bhagavan Swaminar and asked for forgiveness Bhagavan Swaminar said it's okay now never do again the same mistake in your life use the many other means for earning your bread and after giving this message to this group of thieves Bhagavan Swaminar relieved them and uh, these devotees who was traveling from Buranpur to Garuda they have now they also released and they have their all, all belongings with them all the horses, carts and all their stops, foodstops everything with them but still Bhagavan Swaminarayan remained with them for long journey till the other villages came in the way Bhagavan Swaminarayan remained with them till that time and at the other villages in the way they, they would be seen from distance then Bhagavan Swaminarayan along with the devotees he appeared over there in, as divine he disappeared with all the other devotees now the group of devotees from Buranpur they only remain there they proceed <coughs> gradually towards Garuda so this is what the incident happened to this group of devotees who was traveling from Buranpur to Garuda only for having uh, only for enjoying the darshan of Maharaj and a company of Bhagwan Swami and Santo. So this incident also teaches that whenever we even pros whenever we are in a way to mandir or way to meet a Santo or Puja Guruji, we may be in our way can encounter such kind of difficulties or problems. We may have an accident, we may have an uh, any such kind of incident many times many devotees also encountered by uh, police and they may got tickets this may happen but at the time we should, re uh, we should remember this 153rd chapter of Bhakta Chintamani and as the s senior devotee of this Buranpur's devotees group as he said to other devotees that it is our mistake in our devotion towards Bhagavan Swaminarayan and that's why this difficulty is now on us and that's why in this way we should also realize we should also recall this incident and we should also by recalling this incident we should understand that it is our mistake that we forget Bhagavan Swaminarayan's divine form or uh, forget to chant his holy name and that's why we may have these kind of difficulties or problems or obstacles in this way Bhagwan Swaminarayan gave the uh, divine darshan even in a jungle and even in a critical situation to this group of devotees now the un another incident written in the same chapter of Bhakta Chintamani there was another pl uh, reason by the name of Nimar in the central part of India there there was a small village by the name of Sarsod and there one person he was living by uh, his name was Ramji this Ramji was not a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and uh, he has many 
pains and many diseases in in his body so because of this disease he suffer lots of and he had to tolerate the pain because of this disease he consult he even use medication given to him by many doctors and many other persons but all in vain finally as according to others advice he also used the many other approaches like uh, to uh, contact the bua meaning the person who use uh, black magics and some mantra magic and every, such kind of black things but still he was not cured by his disease again he also used another trick for carrying his disease he fed all the other sadhus meaning the sanyasis and babas but still he was not cured and instead his pain was increase and increase day by day and finally once upon a day without invitation or without any uh, message he had passed to bhagwan swami and santo still bhagwan swami and santo they as they traveling one village to another for preaching bhagwan swami and divine message and these two santo they also came to ramji's home ramji got up from his bed and even when he saw this two santo he literally fell down to their lotus feet and he tied his uh the santo's feet with both of his hands and he said please 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 save me from this uh untol- untolerable pain please cure my disease source mercy upon me so that so that i can even at least sleep at night i cannot tolerate this pain this is too much then santo said it's okay we have no any kind of magic in our hands but we are bhagwan swami and santo if you accept our niyams given by bhagwan swami narayan and if you wear the kanthi and if you become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan then bhagwan swami narayan will do anything good to you this ram ji have no any other option and that's why he took a water in his right palm as santo gave him a vartman and after taking a, taking an oath not to drink an alcohol not to eat meat not to steal not in this way he took five religious vows and he throw the water now in this way he become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and finally these two santo he said our lord is swami narayan and you should chant his holy name swami narayan swami narayan swami narayan day and night if you worship bhagwan swami narayan with singular devotion then we do not give you any kind of guarantee for carrying your disease but we give you guarantee for your ultimate liberation whether you will be cured or not that doesn't matter if you will be cured or if you will be die but you will get bhagwan swaminarayan's divine apar aksharam that is our guarantee after giving this message to this ram ji both of santo they left that village and they traveling for the other villages for preaching bhagwan swaminarayan's divine message to the people now this ram ji now as he had too much pain and that's why he only chant bhagwan swaminarayan's holy name swaminarayan 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 day and night he even stopped to drink alcohol and stopped to eat meat and he staunchly follow five religious vows given to him by the santo 
in this way he become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and after some days the final time arrived so bhagwan swami narayan divinely came there on the outskirts of the village there he stayed with along with many many santos and devotees then somebody asked him who are you and why are you coming here how you such a uh, huge and large group of people how you can stay here in our village our village is very small then bhagwan swami and explain him that you just don't worry about it we are not in human form we are divine i myself is a bhagwan of this ram ji and as his time is over from next next day i will i will take him into my akshardham after his death and that's why we are coming here so you do not need to make any kind of arrangement for us and we are even though we are this much in a group still we can live even a small place now after this bhagwan swami the next day ram ji even call all the other uh, villagers as his last moment came he have darshan of bhagwan swami narayan in front of him and also he had darshan of those two santo who gave him five niyams and uh, who gave him commands to chant bhagwan swami narayan's holy name he also have darshan of the many other santos and devotees and as he call all the other villagers he said my bhagwan swami narayan is here now present and i will be now with him in akshardham so the the devotees they could not understand anything because for them this is a new release new religion for them this is a unique incident in their lives and that's why they cannot understand anything they understood that this bhagwan and santo as a guest they may be stay here for two or four days in our village that's why we will be uh, we will have enough time to have darshan of bhagwan and the santo in this way they are in a leather ji they remain in their home but do not have darshan of bhagwan but as after the death of this ram ji bhagwan swami and took him into his akshardham then from that village of sarso bhagwan and santo and devotees they all disappear and after that as the other villagers after knowing that ram ji was died they came there to his home then no bhagwan no devotees no santo no ram ji nothing and they have some pain or some kinds of uh, sorrow remain in their heart that we do not have a darshan of bhagwan some have a darshan of bhagwan who was uh, who were wise they have a darshan of bhagwan and santo and devotees but some have no darshan no realization of bhagwan nothing in this way all these villagers they also realize this incident they many have darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and finally uh, all become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and nishkaran swami said such kind of incident many many times happen to many different villages and many other different different devotees but how can i write down all those incident in this small life and small book so understanding the supremacy of bhagwan swami narayan by describing such kind of incident so sadguru nishkaran swami concluded here 153 chapter of bhakta chintamani and in 154 chapter sadguru nishkaran swami describes many other incident of the different different devotees life shri ganasham maharaj ni jay
प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए कंशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी Arghunsham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagat, and all the devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Two hundred years ago, Sri Ji Maharaj himself brought five hundred elite saints with him. to this earth from akshardham they were called nan santo as we know and recall out of these 500 saints top saints saints that comprised of saintliness and other great virtues saints that were beyond comprehension and imagination on how powerful they were descended from akshardham with maharaj and performed various activities and various incidences keeping maharaj in mind but out of these 500 santos there is one sadhu one saint one paramhans that stands out just like how in the sky when we look during the night time that there's a big difference between the moon and the various stars the billions and billions of stars in deep space in the same way sadguru muktanand swami or you can say first guru in our guru parampara is is the moon compared to all the other sadgurus or santos how so we can only examine and see through his life and from that we can determine that such kind of saintliness has never been exemplified on this earth before but in our guru parampara meaning in our you can say lineage just like how one has a family line lineage of ancestors and so on and so forth in the same way in our spiritual leader lineage sadguru muktanand swami ranks number 1 then afterwards his disciple sadguru adaran swami sadguru ripriya swami sadguru vekun charan swami sadguru narayan swarup swami ar puchya dada guru ji sadguru nan kishor das ji swami and finally the one who we've been living in the presence of for past many years ar puchya guru ji परम पूज्य सद्गुरु श्री घनश्याम प्रकाश दास जी स्वामी सो फॉर इट्स द सेवेंथ लिनेज दैट पूज्य गुरु जी हैज नाउ फॉलोड बट फ्रॉम नंबर सेवन टू नंबर वन देर वॉज मेनी मेनी संतोज इन बिटवीन दैट कंटिन्यू द लिनेज बट आवर पूज्य गुरु जी and his connection with sadguru muktanand swami is very special but today's topic is muktanand swami 
in the sampraday can be said that sadguru muktan swami was underrated or he was un- overlooked but in reality if we look at him in his life his rate or you can say his status in this world cannot even exemplify who he really was his credentials were great beyond any other off the scale nonetheless shri ji maharaj in his last 10 years comprised the vachanamrut and from the vachanamrut such a deep deep shastra not only in hinduism but in the world comprised of all the essence all the philosophies all the principles that one needs to become one with bhagwan one with god are all encompassed inside the vachanamru maharaj there in the vachanamru spoke 262 chapters in various you can say villages but there were many many questions asked by many many santos and devotees but out of that vachanamrut the most questions asked out of sheer motherly compassion were from muktanand swami 90 not only that but maharaj himself kept muktanand swami with him wherever he went maharaj himself and will take a look in the near future also looked at muktanand swami as his guru muktanand swami out of the 500 elite santos was the only sadguru was the only elite saint that stayed the disciple of sajanand swami or the disciple of bhagwan swami nand also nevertheless the guru of the, of sajanand swami or bhagwan swami nare he played both roles just like mir turning on a switch and turning off a switch a very very difficult task to do that no ordinary person can do such kind of attributes such kind of you can say humility humbleness was displayed is some in sadguru muktanand swami you can even say that we remember him every day you're probably like how do i remember him every day every day we sing the aarti in our home morning night and there in the last kadi meaning the last line muktanand swami's name is mentioned there because he comprised the aarti and every day we also can remember him through that story behind how he comprised the aarti and how much compassion he truly possessed for maharaj nonetheless his innumerable saintly virtues made him or you can say displayed himself how he really was in the world but these are just words but maharaj's words are etched in history maharaj's words are truly the words that we should be looking at maharaj's vision is truly and honestly the best vision to look at so if we can take a look maharaj says in the vachanamrut gadada or sorry in loya 6 chapter that when such vicious thoughts arise one should stop at meditation and should clap and chant swami narayan swami narayan aloud without shame one should pray to god o lord you are a friend of the meek you are an ocean of mercy also one should remember a great sadhu of god like muktanand swami and pray to him too maharaj himself says that if we develop some kind of vicious thoughts while worshiping bhagwan meditating upon bhagwan we should chant bhagwan's name by clapping aloud 
but nonetheless remember such a great sadhu like Muktanand Swami. Now, Bhagwan is Bhagwan, but Muktanand Swami, a sadhu that came with him on this earth 200 years ago, we should also remember him and through that process, those vicious thoughts would go away. Imagine how much you can say divine luster. Imagine how much you can say divine power Muktanand Swami must possess in his own name that Maharaj had to say it in the Vachnamrut that even if you don't chant Swami Narayan or you do chant Swami but you should also remember such kind of a sadhu. And such kind of sadhu is in our parampara, in our guru lineage that we're very fortunate of. Nonetheless, in the Vachnamrut, Loya, Loya 13th chapter, Maharaj says himself that at present, even a sadhu like Muktanand Swami can be considered to be like God because of his association with God. I mean, at that point, Maharaj himself was worshipped by thousands and thousands of devotees and thousands and thousands of saints. Maharaj himself brought 500 elite saints, but he also made santos there, approximately 1,500 plus. He had an elite team of 2,000 santos and thousands and thousands of devotees across the lands of India. But in that sabha, in the Vachnamrut, Maharaj said that at present even a sadhu like Muktanand Swami can be considered to be like God because of his association with God. The main part is because he has association with God. But Maharaj said that even Muktan and Swami can be considered to be God. Look at how much of a vision Bhagwan is looking upon Muktan and Swami. Imagine how many virtues he must possess that Maharaj had to say his name. Maharaj said his name and, and compared it with himself and saying that he can worship like God. Imagine how much Bhagwan has, you can say, admirability towards Muktanand Swami. Such a sadhu is in our lineage that we are very fortunate of. So we want to take a look in his life, that what made him who he is. Just a simple couple of qualities that maybe we can reflect upon and maybe, maybe we can possess and maybe we can even just get a small tiny bit from his life and through that we can live such a life that Bhagwan likes. So in his childhood his name was Mukundas and actually from childhood he wasn't interested in the world obviously because he was from Akshritam. He didn't like to play with any of the young boys. He was constantly engrossed in the devotion of Maharaj. Such was the such was the kinds of qualities that he possessed at such a young age. And due to that, his parents knew that this was not an ordinary child. His parents knew that he was something special, something more than they expected him to be, you can say. But his parents loved him. Who wouldn't love such a sadhu? or a child, you can say, at that time, because he possessed innumerable qualities at such a young age. But then at that time, Mukundas, he wasn't, at that time, Mukundas wasn't there for, you can say, playtime. He was there to carry out his task and become a sadhu. But his parents loved him so much how could he do this? How could he carry this task over? How could he leave this world? You can say leave his life. Well, he became crazy, you can say, or mad. For those who want to become sadhus, this is not a good way unless it is recommended. But it was just a technique that he used to become free 
from his parents. Yet his parents looked and looked and they had no change in him. They could not change his crazy ways. So they finally let him go. And three times he changed, you can say, gurus. He tried to find a guru, he could not. Again, he moved on and tried to find another guru, he could not. Third time, he tried to find another guru, but it did not satisfy his heart. They did not satisfy his heart. They did not satisfy him because they did not possess such kind of qualities that he was looking for, or even he merely even had. But there at that time, we can see, Sadhguru Muktan Swami changed three gurus to find finally Ramanan Swami. What does that show to us? What does that teach us? That we should also not live without a spiritual leader. We should not live without a guru. It shows us humility. But nonetheless, Muktanan Swami, at that time he was Mukundas, he knew the factor that if I want to attain God, I have to attain it from someone who, who has Bhagwan, who has a constant connection with Bhagwan, who has and possesses Dharma Bhakti Gnana Vaidagya, who possesses such kind of qualities. How could I do so? Well, in the Vachnamrit, Maharaj says that such kind of ekantik dharma in the Gadara first chapter, 60th Vachnamrit, can only be attained by following the commands of a Purush who is free of worldly desires and who has attained the state of God realization. It cannot be attained merely by reading books. Even if a person were to attempt to restate those talks exactly, having merely heard them, he would not be able to do so properly. Therefore, one can attain ekantik dharma only from someone who has already attained the state of ekantik dharma. This proves that one should not live without a guru. This proves that one should not live without an umbrella when it's raining outside. Well, there's a small story that a goat must have went into the dark, deep forest. And there, the goat was going and going and its foot got stuck in a hole. And it became afraid because at the night time, different, different animals such as tigers and lions and cougars and jaguars made noises, roaring noises. And one by one, each animal came. First came the tiger. And there, the goat next to his, his foot was stuck was an imprint of an, uh, an imprint of a lion. Well, everyone knows that a lion is considered to be the king of the jungle. So everyone is afraid of the lion and everyone respects the lion. So first and foremost, the tiger came and was ready to devour the goat, but saw that his footprint was next to the lion's footprint. So he bowed down and went away. The goat was surprised. How could this be possible? What happened? But he saw that he was sitting next to the lion's footprint. Again, a cougar came by and was ready, very hungry, tried to devour and saw that he was sitting next to the footprint. And again, with admiration, left. Finally, the lion himself arrived and saw that he was sitting next to his own footprint. The lion helped the goat out by getting his foot out of the, out of the hole and guided him throughout the dark, dense jungle and guided him into the light in the same exact way. We can say that the dark jungle is this world, this illusion, this maya. And we can say the goat is ourself. And we can say that those different vicious animals, such as the jaguar and the cougar, are vicious, vicious natures, such as ego, anger, greed, lust. All these are trying to come and devour us. But 
they see that the Ekandik Satpurush has taken a hold, meaning in the form of the lion, the lion is the Ekandik Satpurush, has taken a, a hold of this goat, meaning has stamped his symbol that this is my property. Maya, you cannot touch him. Vicious natures, you cannot touch him. This is my property. So those vicious natures cannot touch him. And finally, when the Ekantik Satpurush comes and takes us out of this world, slowly but surely when we start to follow in his agna, when we start to become or develop such kind of bow towards him, he starts to remove us from this maya. Before we know it, we're past the dense dark jungle and we're in light, meaning we become enlightened and in akshradham. This is what the Ekantik Satpurush does. But in Muktanan Swami's life, he is showing that if you want to become removed from maya, if you want to become removed from such kind of misery, take the refuge of such an Ekantik Satpurush. Such an Ekantik Satpurush mentioned in this Vachnamut Garuda, 1st chapter 68, that possesses Ekantik Dharma himself, meaning Dharma, Bhakti, Gnan, and Vairagya. In the, world, in the world right now, we see many, many santos. But can we truly, and does our heart truly say and feel that these are true santos that possess Ekantik Dharma? But only when we examine only when we live, only when we see and observe that we can see that our Puja Guruji that we've been talking about and lecturing for the past years on not only in this English, English course or in this English lecture but Santos here via live Katha or even in another fashion via reading books or via hearing stories from other Santos and Bhaktos they must not be crazy, you think? Talking and talking, but if such a person possess such kind of qualities, that's the only way that another person, the opposite side, can become satisfied or can become, you can say, convinced that this, this sadhu is not a normal sadhu. This sadhu is not human. He is beyond human. Because such kind of qualities cannot be possessed in humans or deities or anyone else. But we have to observe his life. We have to see that Puja Guruji is like this. And once we understand, then no one can stop us from going to him. And when we develop such kind of, you can say, affection, such kind of bow towards him, then he'll remove us from the jungle, just like how the lion remove the goat from the jungle. Sadguru Muktan Swami's life charitras are very long and we do want to continue but due to the limitation of time we'll continue next week. Nonetheless for a couple of announcements Satsang exam 6 that's going to be held December 3rd which is next week for all those who are in the course next week is the exam Wherever your center is, you can find out the time through your coordinators. Nonetheless, Winter Workshop 2016 is just one month away. It starts on December 30th, 31st, and 1st. We'll be celebrating the New Year's here. You can register on theswaminan.org. So whoever wants to attend, whoever wants to come, if you have any questions, you can also email us at loyadamnj at gmail.com or you can call and the number provided on our website, theswaminarayan.org. Saying this, we'll continue our lecture for Sadhguru Muktan Swami, his life as we know it, and how we can understand and we can imbibe some of the virtues that he possessed for next week. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.